The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the early edition. This is the Tiger Technician's Hour, 8.07 in the morning. Um, hope you're all well. And this will be recorded and replayed at noon. Um, so we're looking at the E-mini just suddenly. In the last uh, few minutes, there was a sharp drop. The Dow uh, futures are down 44 the E-mini, as you can see here, is down 325, which was up about three earlier. Uh, we're looking at the Dow yesterday closing at 27,911. And uh, there's a problem with the chart. I'm going to get out of that again. Let me just double check. Yes, yeah, so let's go there. No, cancel. Go there. Oh, this is not good. Okay, here we go. Got that. Bring it over. It's having a little problem. All right. I think I've got it. I hope I've got it. Um, meantime, back at the ranch, uh, we've got, as I say, the future suddenly took a bit of a dive. I don't know what the news is. And if, that, if there is some economic news, then what we're really looking at here, you see this left side chart. This is the closing price yesterday of the Dow. There's an arch formation that's forming. All you need to see is the Dow now 27,911 of the close. So that's the price that it's at right now. The Dow futures, I'll show you in a second right here, the Dow futures are trading up. I'm sorry, trading down for 41 points. And it's the same thing. We've got a lowercase h pattern. There'll be a change if the Dow futures start to push above, it's at 27,878 in the next two days. Maybe let's even go by Monday. If Monday the Dow futures up in the 28th, 200 area, that's going to be very good action. If there is a pullback and you're suddenly looking at the Dow at 27,600, that says this arch formation that we're looking at is becoming a far more potent uh, vehicle. And it says right here, look, this is the Dow closing price. The weekly chart hasn't gone to a new high of 28,174. So last week made a peak, and it'll be a peak that's more consistent with some kind of digestive phase if there is a week closed by tomorrow at 4 o'clock Friday. Look at the S&P. The S&P right now, the futures are down about uh, three and a half points. But the, the Dow, 3154.8. S&P, 3154.28 was the high of the 27th of November. It's making this arch formation. The MACD is weak. The stochastic is, is okay. It's a 78%. It's not great. But what's really important, and I'm going to go to this now. I've done this so many times over the past few weeks. Here's the... Um, this is, the, this is the Dow with the nine-period exponential moving average. It's flattening out, but it's flattening out above the black line, the 14-period exponential moving average, it needs to cross below it to go pink and go negative. Look at the S&P. S&P at this particular point, nicely above. It started to curve over. But as long as that green line is above, that is showing internal strength. So it's going to take a price of uh, closing price yesterday of 3143.63 in the um, E in the S&P cash suggests that it really has to go under 3118 for that green line to start to dip and go below the black line, nine below the 14 period, showing some internal strength. Let's go to the QQQ. The QQQ index 100, same thing. Hasn't gone to the high of, uh, above the 27th of um, November. None of them have. But here it is above the nine period moving average. The technicals, let me show you for a second here. Go to the technicals in the QQQ. There it is. There it isn't. There it is. QQQ. There it is. And you're looking at a digestive formation. Started a V-shape, failed under the 206.05 high of the 27th. And um, 
holding okay. Now, what has been very strong, and much to my chagrin and to taking a loss for subscribers here and the estimations which we were short, um, it screamed to upside yesterday. I'm not sure. Even now, the the, uh, uh, the so that would be if I can just find it. Yeah. So uh, earlier on, you saw the SMHs uh, a little higher. Now they're pulling back. This candle is going to be really important because I, I, it's either a brand new leg A, which is very bullish, or it's an unusual pattern that I'll have to talk about as a recycle. And that suggests that if the SMHs do take a tumble at 136.48 right now, actually 136.12 down 36 cents pre-market. They have to go all the way back to where the 127 was the low, I think it was December the 3rd. What a huge move in such a short period of time with two gaps. So it's going to be important to me to see whether or not the semis, which have been leading the markets up and down for a couple of years now, breaking to a new all-time high, is that going to be impactful? Is that going to turn the market, uh, certainly the queues, to the upside? I don't know. What is Apple doing right now pre-market? Pre-market, Apple is down 2.84 at 267.93. I don't know. Maybe there's talk about the tariffs here. I didn't get any, anything. Uh, oh, uh, in the den, uh, Dudette says, Apple shares slide off the Credit Suisse, reports plunge in China iPhone shipments. <gasps> wow. Because that's the only way that Apple's going to be impacted. Um, I mean, it's been an app, not just a stellar performer. It has been a major Dow performer. You remember, now, <laughs> Apple is not a deep cyclical like the Dow industrials used to be. Although, when you think about it, for what Apple does, it is really important in the industrial era. But it's not an industrial by any means. It's a, it's a tech company. Actually, it's a service company right now. So that's going to be re very important. What's Boeing doing pre-market? Pre-market, Boeing's down too. It was lousy yesterday. Then it came back towards the end of the day. Um, and now it's down too at 348. Um, just not a good chart pattern for, for uh, Boeing. And yet, with all that terrible news, Boeing made an all-time high of 446.01. The low has been at the 320 level. And then it's rebounded all the way to the 390s. And now it's at 350, 348. When you think about it, Boeing's held very well. I'm not sure it can keep doing that because some of the news is going to be really bad when it comes out, when the lawsuits, etc., come out. All right. So back at the ranch, we're looking at the Dow futures down 46 pre market. This is an early edition show. I won't be able to make the noon show, so it'll be recorded. Now at 8.14, is down. The futures are down 50, and the SP is down 3.75. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't 
don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. Tiger, uh, this is uh, Tiger Technicians Hour, and uh, this is a pre recorded show. It's live right now. Call in at 877 So I had a, a call just as I was going off air yesterday. I, I didn't see it, uh, it was a, a little late. And I'm kind of upset about it because I was going to do it this morning so it could be repeated. And it, it, let me see, it was from Julian, I believe. Let me see if I can find it right here. But I didn't get the right symbol. Um, <laughs> so Julian from North Carolina, XBT. I don't have XBT. I, um, and they couldn't wait too long, so I, I missed him. Let me see XBT. Maybe XBT is, is, is a... Nope. XBT. Now, I'm not sure what it is. A TBX. Maybe TBX. Or maybe it was... No, I don't know what it was. Maybe TBT. But let's do that right now. Uh, if it was a TLT, I, I had done it just before when he called. Maybe that's why he didn't hold on long enough. The TLT right now is down 17 cents. This is the iShares 20-year Treasury bond fund. So at 139.58, it's right here in the middle. It made a peak. Do you remember in the Chapman Wave methodology, we're always looking for that fourth highest peak. I don't know if I can quickly show that right now. There it is. So let me just quickly show you. Um, I had a meetup the other day that I was a guest speaker. So maybe there's some people that are looking to see uh, exactly what the Chapman Wave is about. Try to identify the lowest low bar. If you do, we count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them sequentially. Peak A is the first one, peak B is the second, a penny higher than B starts leg C. Uh, if it makes a peak, it becomes peak C. Penny above C starts leg D, goes one penny above that. The yeah, leg D continues until it makes one penny lower um, uh, for a peak, and that becomes a peak D. It can go all the way to E, F, and G, but it's a D that other things can happen. And that's your objective in the Chapman Wave in the different time frames. And then there's a recycle of a bunch of things, but this is the easy part. I only look for three patterns. Straight down, straight up, arch formation or a cup, or you can get a combination where I call it the lowercase h. If you take out the left side low, that can keep going down, and the inverted or reverse y, like an upside down h, lowercase h. And uh, if you go above it, that can keep going high. Look, these look a to b makes it an, um, a, a reverse y. Look, reverse Y. That's all it is. So those are it's three three patterns. That's all I'm looking for. And alphabet going to a G, seven letters. So we make that fourth highest peak in the TLT. Pulls back sharply. It had done that once before. Remember all the way back. Oh no, sorry, it went to an F back in uh, 28th of August at 148.90. Came down to 140, 134.45. Right is all the way to 141. Hmm, I should have typed that in. The rally is all the way to 140, 171.77 on the third. Put that in. 
Okay, one for 1.3723, and then it pulls back. So yields have been stuck in a range for, for a little while. Look, there's that dreaded H pattern, that lowercase h in the weekly chart. It took it out decisively, but it has not closed below 136.54 in all this time. So it's really gone sideways. You can see that in the TNX, dollar TNX, dot X. That's a 10-year yield. It went to a... Mm, that's not correct. A, B. All right, so it had an A, B, C that had failed. It became a C minus, and this becomes a new A. So what we're really looking at here, this is a very unusual chart formation. What we're looking at in the yield is just look at the, this weekly chart. You're just going sideways between 1.79, where it is now, to 1 point, uh, probably 1.92, I think it is. Let me see. Uh, 1. 1.97, and the low, at least for now, is probably 1.6, 1.55. So it's just stuck in a range, not no big deal. Now let's look at this, because you've got gold trying to rally here. It is up, it's not trying, it's actually rallying quite nicely. It's up eight at 14.83. The big thing is this, will we now see gold start to move, and the commodities in general, start to move higher and um if that's the case there's this rectangle formation here or it's an arch just turning into a rectangle that says if gold starts to trade in a leg d in the daily above 14 1490 in the continuous contract and it's trading at 1483.2 right now that's going to be very positive and it says the weekly chart is consolidating but it's having an inside uh, inside the rectangle rally. The silver was acting poorly, but silver might be rallying today. I haven't checked it yet, but it's up 0.12. Not great, not a great chart formation at all, but it's acting better. The dollar took a real beating over the last uh, four days, going from the 97.80 level to 97, uh, just over 97, and now it's at 97.16. This is going to be really important because it's a weekly, it's a daily peak D, two peak Ds since the top of 99.62. It's a peak D in, hmm, wait a minute, that's incorrect. That was 99, I believe. Oh, no, 67. 67, right there. Let's change that to a 7. And uh, that was in the week of the 4th of October, 99.67. And now it's trading at the, in the 97 area. There's this huge uptrend, this up channel with the Chapman wave inside buy zone. If it goes underneath that, it starts to trade in the 96.55 area in the next week or so. That's going to be very bad action. And you've, that's a peak D. And you've got a peak D from the, all, from the major high of 103.82 in January of 2017, plunges down to the um, uh, 88 area. Uh, it's, it rallies then up to a peak D that was confirmed last month. This month it's continuing lower. And it's sitting on that 14 period moving average and a trend line support. So I'm just saying that if the dollar really starts to take a tumble, go into the 9630s in the next week or two, that's going to be a signal to say the Fed's got a new plan. The plan is to weaken the dollar and to see we can finally get those commodities moving high. Look at this TRCCI, Thomson Reuters Commodity Index, Equal Weighted Commodity Index, moving up here. Um, it's at 409.86, and it needs to go above uh, 409.58 to start a leg C in the daily, and the weekly will be a leg C, and then monthly will extend leg A. That'll be a very good sign. If Fed wants inflation, this is the way they're going to get it, I suspect. Now, a couple of things that we also need to look at here, and that is crude oil. Crude oil is uh, up 16 cents at 58.92. It's in a range, but it's jumped out of the rectangle range and is up in the, uh, the higher level of the daily. But the weekly chart has 60.50 as resistance. It's at 58.92 in the continuous contract. And 57, let's call it 56.80, is going to be the support that we need to see it hold over the coming, going into December, the end of December. So, so far, crude oil is holding very well. The high-grade copper had a nice move the other day, uh, sort of stalling here, but it's had a spectacular move. 2.62 all the way to the high of today, 2.79. 
that's that's a huge move. It's done this before, but this is now leg C in the weekly chart. That makes it improving, and it's really important that you start to see uh, copper moving higher as an international uh, economic display. But the weekly, ch the monthly chart says, "Hey, we've seen this before. Nothing much to see here." I'll be right back in a few moments. The Dow futures are down 37. S&P futures are down two. Basil Chapman, pre this is the early show. This is eight. 27 in the morning. We'll be back in a few minutes. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, uh, folks. Just had a, 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 a question here. No, it's actually a statement. Pegging the U.S. dollar is a very dangerous path to take, says Paul. You know, in a sense, I, I kind of agree with that. Um, and I'll tell you why. I think that the dollar represents economic strength. So if you want to use that as some kind of a, 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 an economic weapon, in other words, bring the dollar down so multinationals can do better, um, that's going to be, that's going to be, uh, I don't know. I, I, I kind of agree with that as a sentiment, but I need to see this play out because currencies in the international spectrum uh, this is big stuff. I mean, the volume that you're looking at when you're talking about currencies, it's the same as bonds. People don't realize, most people don't realize, they think stock market, stock market, but the amount of money that flows into bonds, it's just unbelievable. And the same thing with the currencies. So I, that's my, I agree with that sentiment. 
I just need to see how this is going to play out. As I say, um, I've said for a long time, since April of 2018, subscribers to my opening call newsletter have been long, taken uh, the dollar back, it was at 90.07, and it ran all the way to the 99s. Uh, for a currency, 10%, that's, that's big, especially for the dollar. Now it's given back quite a bit of that uh, in the shorter term. I just need to watch this closely, and as I say, we still, I'm trying to hold that core position because I think the dollar is going to get become stronger again. Um, so XBT, I, I, you know, I, I don't know how to, I can't do anything about this. I put in XBT and it says incorrect symbol. So I, I had a call yesterday. I wish um, probably isn't listening, but just email me um, at Basil Chapman at tfnn.com or um, just call it. If you can call again, I'll be live tomorrow at my usual time at noon. But right now uh, the, I'm doing the early show. It's at 8.32 in the morning. The futures took another hit. Now the S&P is down 62 and the, uh, uh, the Dow is down 62. The S&P is down four. So we'll see how this plays out. Uh, let me just put this back in here. Yeah, let me just show you something I think is going to be very important. Here's the E-mini. Um, going to show this right here because this is December and December will wrap up very soon. We'll go to March. But this is what I showed subscribers. So this uses a whole bunch of the techniques of the Chapman Wave methodology. Peak D, very important. Yes, you can go higher, but D is so many times in the, in the, how many years, 15 years, 60? How long have I been here? Since 2003? 15, 16 years. Um, I couldn't even tell you how many times PD has been a major sell-off. So this happens to be a G in the daily chart. It happens to be E slash C in the weekly chart. Why is it E slash C? Because if it continues the D just alphabetically, it would be an E. But from the low that was made back in June at 2777, round number low in the E-mini, we've run up to the 3158 area. Um, if it pulls back very deeply, I'll have to call this an E, but right now I think it's a C. I think the weekly charts still have a chance to make another a new high before we have a deeper correction. But look at this 120-minute chart. The 31.51 round number high makes a peak D. So this, the alternation between cup, look at this cup and arch. It just keeps there's the arch formation. Then the cup turns out to be a V-shaped pattern, but it's the same thing. You're going from one level, 31.51, down to the low that was made at 3115, was it? 3116.25. So 31, let me put that in. 3116.25. And then we run up to another peak D, but there's a left side, right side price time match, which takes us to uh, about the exact time of within two bars of. Six o'clock this morning. And what does it do? It goes to 3150.75, misses by 25 cents, making that left side high. And now it's pulling back some. So you can see, and look at the beautiful patterns. I have a Chapman Wave inside track repellent. So you see this dashed line here. You've got the left side, right side price time match, not exactly to the plumb line low, but to a very important candle. And then you come in right here, and it's exact. And the MACD is way weaker than it was when it was making the highs back at 31.51. And stochastic has turned down sharply under 80%. Now it's at 73%. So there are signs here to say that some kind of a topping action is unfolding. But this is pre-market. By an hour's time at 9.35, when the market's already five minutes open, who knows what news could be out there? I'm just saying that the patterns I'm looking at suggest that there is a weakening in the technicals, but that nine period moving average is just, it's, it's an unbelievably great uh, uh, benchmark to be able to use as a tool, but it's not a timing tool, it's a confirmation tool. And the timing tool I've used many times before. If you look at this chart, you'll see that. I just, I'll show it just briefly. Many of you have seen it dozens of times, but I'll just show it here because some always have new people. So I put a bad news cloud cover from the high, the all time high that was made at uh, 28,174. We were very fortunate. We did short the Dow uh, two days later, right at the opening. I think it was Monday at the open about 70 points, 70, 75 points of the all-time high, and the market plunged down. So what happened is we covered, took a little bit of a profit because it was a very sharp move up. 
We've reshorted, and now we have to see whether, whether this new short is going to. I'm just looking at this. It says maybe you're a little early because we haven't got a breakdown. But other times, this bad news cloud cover from the high has gone 14 periods from the last one in September before it broke down. The, the, the nine went under the, the 14, changed color to, to pink. It was in uh, that right there. That was in September. At 27,398, and for there we were fortunate getting the, uh, within seven points of that exact day's high to be able to short. Then there was about bad news cloud cover. It took 13 days before the pink line uh, appeared. And here it was back a day before we shorted, the day before the high of the 23rd of April. And it took 10 days from that high before you got a breakdown. And you can go on. So uh, all I'm saying is that. This time, you don't expect something to work perfectly four times in the stock market. A pattern hardly ever repeats, let alone repeats three times. But to go four times, it looked like it was going to be a fantastic call. And all of a sudden, it bounces now. We, that green line's holding there. I've seen this green line hold, hold, hold. Price even goes way below. But the green line doesn't. The 90 EMA doesn't. And then it starts on a new move up. So I'm not, there's no, you cannot take your hands off the wheel to pat yourself in the back in this particular environment. This is, you need more evidence. And evidence to me actually would only be a close below 27,325, the low of the 3rd of December. That would say to me, aha, now you're going to get a deeper correction, a pretty serious correction uh, in price. And we don't know about time. Time is a completely different uh, benchmark. So all I'm saying is we're watching this closely. And especially when you get the SMHs breaking out like that, I just have to, I have to confirm that um, not all the little ducks are in order. <laughs> and this is one of the most important. It looks like it was breaking down right here in the, in the uh, let me show you in the SMH, the semiconductor ETF. Look at this. Looked like it, and it did for a day. It went, it went, it closed pink. And then it bounced back. So do you suddenly see it reverse back again? We'll have to see. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Editions Hour at 8.38 in the morning. Be replayed at 12.38 this afternoon. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks, we're back, and we're back here. It is uh, 8.42 in the morning, so it'll be 12.42 if you listen to the recorded show. Here's the E-mini 10-minute chart, made a peak E, uh, back at about 5 o'clock this morning, uh, up in the 31.50 area, 30.75. Trading right now at 31.38. You can see there's that pink line, and you have to get a signal the other way. I got the signal right there. MAGD turned down, stochastic turned down, and you got the um, nine period pulling back underneath the black line, the 14 period moving average. The black line stays black all the way. It's the uh, nine EMA that goes green and then goes pink when it crosses negative. And now you've gone underneath the 200 period exponential moving average and it's down four. I, you know, at this time in four hours, is it three hours? Three hours time. Uh, four hours time. In four hours time, could be anywhere, but I suspect there's going to be some digestive action going on. That's the way we're looking at it. A couple of things I want you to do. I think it was Bitcoin that um, uh, Julian had asked about yesterday, GBTC. If that's the case, we're looking at 8.62. This is the fund. This is the um, cannabis marijuana fund. Uh, oh, cannabis, that's MJ. Sorry, MJ is the thing I was talking about the other day. This is the um, Bitcoin. GBTC, Bitcoin fund, trading 862. Look at that pink line. It's very strong to the downside. It's going to take a tremendous amount. Probably have to take a move into the 9.80, 10.20 to get the, the Bitcoin price to be above the 14-period moving average and holding there and to get the pink line to even think about crossing positive in the daily, the weekly looks bad, the monthly looks bad, but at any point you can get a move up. Now look at the flattening of the MACD. You see the histogram, the little red lines there? Those red lines are telling you that there's a little bit of an improvement. I don't think it's an improvement enough. I, to tell you the truth, I, I would still be staying away from both the MJ, which is the uh, alternate harvest, and the cannabis um, sector, and Bitcoin, they both have had extraordinary um, public sentiment to the bullish side at some point. Look at that PKF major top. Uh, look at this. Bitcoin, let me see if I can get it going all the way back. Uh, that's the 120 minute chart. Oh, I meant to move this away. Move this away. There we go. So here's the monthly. Look at that monthly at 38.71. Uh, <laughs> that, that's serious stuff. 38.71, it goes down to 3.66. Uh, that was back in, uh, I think, December or January of this uh, this year, or December last year. And then it rallies up to the 16s, and now it's trading at 8. Uh, it's a problem. And until Bitcoin, uh, it's, I think it's going to take a while for it to kick kick in. So at this particular point, I anticipate if any bounce happens, it's going to still come back, trade back into the 8s. But um, keep an eye on it. I just don't think I would be in that. And I'm, I mentioned MJ because it was asked about, um, and I, I forgot to talk about it yesterday. Uh, MJ is at 17. This is the alternative harvest cannabis sector ETF. It ran to 45.40. And you remember, this is way back. Uh, yeah, that was December of uh, 2018. Yes, 18. I remember everyone, I went to a, a, a New Year's Day party and everyone there was talking about it. And I was saying to them, you know, I, I, I'd be a little nervous. That's all I said. I didn't say anything else. I'd be a little cautious. And people said, no, we missed out on all the other uh, the, uh, fads. This one's going to be unbelievable. And they were buying it at, in the 45s, 40, 45 area. And uh, it did pull back a little bit um, down to the uh, 15s, I would say, 
uh, cut uh, in two thirds. That's not a great thing. So, uh, MIK, MIK question the den. Is that MIK? What is MIK? I know most symbols. I've never seen MIK. Oh, the Michaels companies um, trading at, what's the question? Uh, I don't know if I remember, there are any counts in the stock market? Oh, no, no. Uh, good morning. I was watching, uh, no, that's not it. That's it. I thought I saw a question here. Oh, how did I get there? Oh, uh, but, but, but I, uh, looking at the chart of MIK, I'm calling it a, mm, calling it a coin toss pattern of the animal spirits talking to you on this one, Basil. You know, this kind of pattern, 6.59, MIK is a symbol, um, the Michaels companies, I think they're in, in is it Michaels companies, I thought they were buildings. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's trading. It was back in the 20, uh, 26 area, 27 area um, in 2018 and the beginning of yeah, 2018. And it really took a dive. It went down to the five area and now it's trading at uh, 6.59. This is the kind of pattern that says to me, first expect a rectangle. So I'll draw it in right here. And if the rectangle doesn't take out the left side low, in this case, it's the low of 596, made on the 5th of December, over a period of six to seven bars. So this is one, two, three, four. So you've got today and the next day. And it, it makes a high in that interim period pulls back and then takes out that high, I think you can nibble. You could just start a position there, realizing that it's a gamble because it hasn't got any, the, the, the technicals are not there yet. So if we can trade even one penny above 707, go to 708, you can start a very small position and you could have a stop at the range. It's a bigger stop than I would like, say, 50 cents on a $7.31 stock at a starter position. Yeah, maybe maybe you can do that. Even even seven, seven cents, I'm sorry, seven cents, 70 cents, just as you get into the position, but then you've got to tighten it up. And then you want to see it get as quickly as possible to the daily 14 period moving average of 7.31. So I hope that helps you because... Um, the H pattern in the weekly chart held. It hasn't gone even close to the low that was made back in um, August of 4.96. So the low of 5.96 is good because it hit 11 and it's pulled back. So that's the reason why I'm saying to you, look at this rectangle. If it pulls back here and goes underneath 642, I'm not interested. Don't even think about it yet. You have to wait for the H pattern to fulfill. Uh, so let's just do that. So. A little bit of a balance, you could start a position, uh, make it initially a little bit more of a, a stop, uh, 70 cents, just for the moment, and then immediately tighten it up as it starts to move higher. And as a starter position, and let it hold, and let it prove itself. So if that helps, uh, let's just see where the dollar is right now, because it looked like it was trying to stabilize, 97.14. This is a really big moment for the dollar. Why? Because of this, this trend line here, the start of the Chapman Wave buy, zone. This is this parallel up channel, tiny little up channel. There's a much bigger one over there, but I'm talking about this little one. It's a technique I developed because if it goes underneath the red, the dash pink, uh, red, dash red line and starts on a weekly basis, actually closes even one week below 90, 96, 9660, 9650, it closes below that. That's going to really impact both the, the weekly and the monthly chart. I can understand it pulling back and going sideways, but if it just cre it continues this pattern of the dreaded H, the lowercase H, it makes lower lows on the on the, the right side here, and the MACD is really weak in the weekly, and the stochastic is weak in the in the day in the weekly as well. Um, the dollar is going to have a problem. The dollar is going to have a problem. All right, we'll be back in a moment. Dow futures are down 35, S and P is down 1.75, holding pretty well when you think about it. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Edition is our early edition. 
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. So uh, check out the front page of TFNN. It's got uh, wonderful things. It's got Tiger, uh, Tiger Dollars, just fabulous deals uh, right through all of all of you people listening and you know, who have new want to get newsletters or whatever or, or um, any of the uh, webinars so um let me just uh, show you something here one of the clues for me that there's some internal strength on a sideways move uh, we have a stock cyber uh, we got into the 104 area uh, it ran to 124, 67. It pulled back sharply to 115, and now it's trading at 120 down to 95 after having a good candidate of 121. These sideways. Let me just get rid of this so it doesn't look so messy. These side. And so we've taken quite a bit off. We have uh, we have a core position left, but this is really important because in the security, Cyber Arc is the, is the name of the company. Uh, CYBR is a symbol. This rectangle formation can go, uh, my expression always is that a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. So I'm hoping that it would pull back sharply because I'd like to get back, put the whole position back on again. Because, uh, you know, you take profits, you want to put it back if you like the stock. I like the stock. It was a leader all the way back going into the July high of 148.74, right from the uh, July of 2000 and 17 low in the 40 area. I mean, threefold uh, increase is fantastic. So, oh, what am I talking about threefold? Uh, it's even more. So, um, yeah, so we're looking at, 
the cyber area. I think this is a, an area that in, in 2020 is going to become alive again. That might, many of the stocks have taken a bit of a drubbing over the shorter term. So you, I'm looking at things for the coming year. With the, the Bank of America stock that we started buying in December of last year, taking profits in that, and we have a core position still. And we, we've traded it. I missed the last buy. I really should have added to it back in the 31 area. It's trading right now 33.65. Um, it made a new all-time high of 33.80 just the other day. These stocks, um, I think the financials are going to do pretty well as well in uh, 2020, even with some kind of a pullback. So check out the uh, front page of TFN, the, my, my opening calls, my newsletter. And stay tuned. You've got Larry Pesaventa coming up right now, programming all day. And if you're listening to the show in the broadcast later, it'll...